As we continue our debt-free journey, having an extra thousand dollars to invest makes an absolute game changer, especially when you're doing dollar cost averaging over an incredible amount of time. We're gonna be breaking down our portfolio, but if you had a thousand dollars to invest, where exactly would you put it? Let me know down, down in the comments exactly where, if you're looking into the 401ks, if you're looking into the IRAs, the HSAs, the backdoor Ross, where exactly would you put a thousand dollars today if you had it available? Or would it be earmarked for that emergency fund? Would it be used for debt repayment? Would it be used for a 520? plan. There are a lot of different options when it comes to investing. Me personally, we're continuing the debt-free journey to go ahead and invest that money. And so far, our portfolio has been doing absolutely phenomenal. So I want to break that down just like we always do. We'll get into our Excel spreadsheet and show you exactly where we've been investing, what the gains are looking like, and how we are performing with this portfolio. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at it. So here we are looking at our debt-free journey. As you can see, our current value just over 92 all-time gain over 15, which gives us all-time return at 58.83%. That is right, we are almost at 60%. When you look at 2022, it was a very down year. We've seen the stock market really taking a hit. This gave us a really big buying opportunity. Now, if you follow some of the advice of Warren Buffett, when there is blood in the streets, you should be buying. When people are really fear selling off a lot of the market, that is the time you need to be buying. This is where dollar cost averaging comes in. At that point, every two weeks, we were actually putting a little bit into the market to build up our portfolio and knowing that eventually could take weeks, could take months, could take even years to build back up, but we were stockpiling our ETFs. Now, me personally, I only invest in ETFs. I do not do individual stocks. I do not do div dividend stocks. I do not do any individual stocks at all. I like the diversification of the ETFs, and if by chance I don't have time to monitor it or if I'm not tracking it anymore or not looking at it, I know that it is well diversified across the market. So looking here at our debt-free journey, um, we have our $1,000 queued up for tomorrow, which is actually gonna do our buy, but looking at our numbers, so far we've earned over $1,000 in dividends, which is awesome. Net cash flow, we're at 77K. You can see the portfolio started on September 26th of 21, and so far we are almost to a 59% return, which is kind of crazy. Now, one of the unique things that we do have with M1 is has kind of an auto rebalance. So you can rebalance your portfolio to get it back to the even weighted equity. But overall, when we look at the upcoming trades, you can see we actually do have five, four buys here. It is very heavily weighted in the SCHD. Well, there is almost nothing in the VUG. This will automatically rebalance every single week when we're doing the dollar cost averaging. So it's pretty unique that you don't have to auto balance it because every pie is kind of separated into its own percentage, which I'll show you guys in just a minute. So looking down here on our bottom right, these are what we hold, the VUG, which of course is the Vanguard Growth Fund. You can see 71%, which is insane for a growth fund. Remember, when you're looking at an investment strategy, we're talking seven plus years. At this point, we are two years in what, three, four, five months? About two years and five months into this, which means we still have an incredible amount of time. Think of the growth factor in the next five years with a portfolio like this. QQQM, which we know is the NASDAQ 100, 22% that were up right there, but the VOO, which is where I had a bulk of the money for an incredible amount of time. When I started this portfolio, we were investing solely in the VOO and not into any other ETF, nothing of that nature. Now I know with these, there are a little bit of an overlap, but I am okay with that. Checked with a bunch of different sources, including some financial advisors. They said this is a very solid portfolio for what it covers in the different sectors and what we're looking to do with this. Then of course we have the SCHD. This one, again, a little bit lower of a gain in return, but overall, this is our dividend fund. So if we see a lot of volatility where the VOO, the QQQM, um, the VUG might be down or have a lot of variance, the dividend funds stay pretty stable overall. We don't see the huge spikes and the huge declines like we do with a lot of individual stocks. And also looking at the ETFs, you're seeing a kind of the exact same thing. So even when we kind of break it down to the VOO just a little bit further, you can see right here we own 68 shares. The shares are pretty expensive in this one, but the big thing to remember is with these Vanguard ETFs, 
the expense ratio is almost negligible. I mean, a 0.04 expense ratio. When you look at a lot of financial advisors that are 1% for managing, things of that nature, makes a really big difference when you have a low expense that you can just put money into and then go ahead and forget it. Then of course, there is a little bit of a dividend yield on this one. But my favorite still, and I know again, Warren Buffett, the VOO, the S&P 500. This is the 500 largest companies in the United States. And you can see we have over 50 shares right here, expense ratio of a 0.03. So the expense ratio overall is super cheap. Dividend yield a lot higher in this one. And this is just focused on the market. So when we talk about the S&P 500, again, it is the biggest 500 companies in the United States. But overall, they make up a majority of the market. So when you get into kind of the details and break it down a little further on the progression, you can see breaking out, we have Apple, Amazon, Google, we have Brookshire Hathaway in there, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Meta, Tesla, JP Morgan. So even when, again, you think of the largest companies within the United States, even when you do, let's say, um, looking at AI funds and things like that, we have Google in there, we have Microsoft, we have NVIDIA, we have Meta, we have a lot of companies, including Apple, um, that have a lot vested into research and development when the AI technology comes out. They are the biggest and strongest companies that we see within the United States. So holding them in a portfolio. And then of course, we look at historical performance. So when we go back five years, we are on an 85% increase with the VOO over the last five years. Now, again, we do get kind of dividends in there, um, as you can see right here along the chart in the bottom. So dividend payout is good, but overall we are looking for that growth factor that we see. Now, of course, the other one that we were kind of talking about was that SCHD. This is my dividend fund, and you should be familiar with this because you know what? This is one that a ton of people absolutely hold, but these are more focused on dividends, which we get dividends on this. We'll go back last five years on dividend payouts on a very, very regular basis. Thing with this one is it is much cheaper. Where you have the VUG and the VOO, that's running a couple hundred dollars a share. This one is running $70 a share. And then, of course, this is based on dividends. A lot of companies in here, like Home Depot, um, Verizon, even looking at um, like AT&T, most of these are very high dividend blue chip, meaning they have very low risk companies within the United States. And the dividend yield we're getting on here is 3.46%. So not only do we have, look, over the last five years, a 53% growth for this actual fund, but also that 3.46 dividend yield, which is in there, very, very nice to see and nice to have within the portfolio itself, making a big difference. So over the last two years, how exactly, how well has this performed? Since we started tracking this um, a couple months ago, we actually started back in November, we started doing this dollar cost averaging every single week. As you can see, the very beginning and as we see the stock market continue to perform, we were at 22% at the beginning. This 44 in yellow is a rebalancing that we did when we were going to add that Bitcoin ETF, ended up staying out of it and actually selling it for about a $200 loss in there. But sticking with the portfolio, which is exactly what I'm doing, 58.83%, which is our portfolio with over a $15,000 gain within the last two years. Dividends, of course, pay out quarterly basis. Now with everything that we have and also with the funds being completely 25% each one, the dividend payouts are going to be much higher because we do have that SCH in there, which means, remember, we want to do this for 52 weeks. We are 14 weeks in at this point. We're trying to do this for an entire year and the balance is already coming at 92. Now, over the last week, we made 1,280. Now, there were no additional div dividend payouts. So this is really just the build that we had out of there. And then, of course, the VOO went from 11.7 to 12. Little bit of a gain right there. We went from 11.96 to 16.11 right there. So a big gain for the QQQM. And then, of course, the VUG, which was from 27 to 33. Now, one thing to note is with this one, we also did see a decrease right here. This went to 466.94. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug that one in there as well. So 466.94 was the additional one that went in there. So you can actually see with the SCHD, um, we were at 530. It went down a little bit. Um, then it kind of went down quite a bit more. 
Um, but again, kind of negligible because it is a dividend stock or a dividend ETF. That is something that we know is going to happen with this because it takes a lot of volatility out. A lot of gains you don't get, but a lot of losses you don't get because of the dividend in the portfolio that we do have. And then of course, the GBTC is the one that we actually sold out. So negative 238. Um, really going into holding Bitcoin just in a self-custody wallet versus holding it through an ETF, which essentially most of them are held through Coinbase. So there is kind of a bit of an unraveling or um, something that I didn't find that I liked very much, especially because the coins were held by another institution and you really don't have custody of them. So all right, guys, so that is gonna do it for today's portfolio update. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.